name of the Lord. You are welcome once again to World Congress. World Congress is a special discipleship communion of the Light for All Nations mission. We are, according to the scriptures, we gather to hear the word of God and to be healed of our infirmities. Infirmities means weaknesses. It can be in every aspect of life. So the word of God has all it takes to make us all we can ever be. Hallelujah. It is by the word of God that we are saved. And that word of God is incorruptible. The Bible says, being born again, not with corruptible seed, but the incorruptible word of God that lives and abides forever. So every other thing like flowers we fed, but the word of God lives forever. And that is the word through which we have been born again. This morning in World Congress, we shall be looking at the theme, Where I am, there ye may be also. It's a very familiar statement. And one of the most you know, misinterpreted uh, phrase in the Bible. So this morning, as we go through that particular scripture, we trust that God will give each and every one of us understanding that will give us a better reality, even as we live in God's kingdom, right now and in the future. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this session of your word. We ask that your spirit will indeed fill our heart with the understanding that comes with the word, bringing about transformation of lives totally. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we are taking our text from John chapter 14, from verse 1 to 6. John chapter 14, from verse 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. Hallelujah. Now, when Jesus was sent by God into the earth, it was to bring us salvation. But it is much more than just saving us. Hallelujah. He did not just only save us. He also did more than saving us. He made us to be his children. He made us to be his children. Sons of God. That statement of Jesus, that where I am, there ye may be also, is a very deep statement that if you do not understand the entire narrative of the gospel, you may begin to misunderstand what he's saying. Most of the things we preach and teach in the church today are given out of the context of the narrative of the gospel. The people themselves created their own narrative and tried to fit the gospel into their narrative and end up distorting the concept or that idea that God is presenting to us. So when we see the entire narrative of the gospel, we'll be to understand what, it, what he meant by that where I am, there you may be also. Now, let me explain carefully what that statement means. Now, we we'll look at the entire John chapter 14 we have read. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Many people have looked at it as if Jesus said, I am flying back to heaven to prepare a place for you. When I finish preparing, 
then I will come back. In fact, I'm going to build mansions for you in heaven. When I finish building them, I will come back and take all of you and allot your mansions. That is the idea that all of us have been brought up with. But let us look at it carefully in the understanding of the entire narrative of the gospel. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. What does that mean? It is pointing to us the difference between religion and relationship. You believe in God. That is religion. Anybody you see in any religion will tell you, I believe in God. I believe in God. They can describe God in different ways. They can say God is four, God is three, God is plenty, God is like that. But they are, all of them will tell you they believe in a deity. They believe in God. Jesus, no problem. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Now, believe also in me points to family relationship. And I'm going to explain why. In John 3.16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe. Jesus is saying that the foundation of what he was about to do, going to prepare a place where you are sitting where, or that where I am, there you may be also, for you to be where he is, it requires faith in him. You are believe that there is God. It's okay. Hallelujah. Your belief that there is God is fine. But another very important thing is clear. Your belief in Jesus is what brings you salvation. I don't care the kind of idea or the kind of belief you have. Hallelujah. About God. But the most important thing is that unless you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot be saved. And that salvation is what he meant by, where I am, there you may be also. Now, talking about believing in God, the Bible tells us that even demons believe that there is one God. In James chapter 2, verse 19, he said, you believe that there is one God, good, even the demons believe and they tremble. So that you believe that there is God. You are saying, I believe in God. Me, I believe in God. I believe in God. I believe in God. That's okay. Good. Demons also believe that. But he didn't save them. You can never be saved just because you believe in God. You need to believe in Jesus Christ because that is what God the Father have decided. It is only in Jesus that you will be saved. It is only Jesus that can bring you to where he is. And I'm going to explain that for that. We are still going to explain what it means by that where I am, there he may be also. But I want to show you that the foundation of all this is not religion, which is just a mere belief in a deity or in a God, but in relationship. And not just ordinary relationship, but family relationship. Now, in the second phase of that John chapter 14. Jesus said, in my father's house, underline that word, my father's house. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now, that in my father's house simply talks about in his family. My father's house is my family. My father's house is not the building. My father's house is my family. That's why I say the household of Onesiphorus. The household of the family of. So Jesus is saying that in my family, where I and my father dwells, there is room for more. I am the only son of my father, and only both of us dwell in that house. That is to say, in that family. We are the only members of that family, of that divine family. Hallelujah. We are the only members of that divine family. And there is room for more. 
Hallelujah. There is space for more. Have you seen when somebody has uh, siblings and he says he wants to, he wants his parents to have more children? I want to have uh, more siblings. I, have to, I want to have more brothers and sisters. That is what he's talking about here. In my father's house, I'm in my Now, some of you listen to me and say, ah, this man, I tried to change the scripture. I tried to say that it's not, it's not about heaven. What are you trying to say? Please forget about whatever we have been indoctrinated over the years. In my father's house means my father's family, in the divine family of Jesus and his father. For God so loved the world, he said his only begotten son. That is family. His son, father and son. Only them. But Jesus is saying, there is more space. We have room for everyone to be a member of this same family. So I am going to prepare a place for you is that I am going to make it possible for you to join me as sons of God. I am the son of God. You too can become sons of God through me. I am going to make it possible. For as much then are the children are partakers of flesh and blood. He also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy the one who had the power of death and bring life to those who have been in the bondage of fear of death. So he says, in my family, in my father's house, I am the only son, but there is room for more sons. So I am going to make it possible for you to join me as sons of God. And when I am done, you who have believed in me will join me both in spirit and in all ramification, so that where I am, there you will be also. In other words, you will become sons of God just as I am the son of God. You will come into that relationship that I have with my father the same way I have it. I am going to create a room for you to become sons of God just as I am the son of God. That where I am, there you may be also. I am bringing you to where I am. I am bringing you to that status of sonship that my father has given me. Now, when he was done with preparing a place, what did he do to prepare the place? He needed to die and resurrect. Through his death and resurrection, the bondage of the first birth, which is being born of the flesh, is taken care of. And his resurrection brought about the new creation, the new birth. You are now born again into the family of God. You were born into the family of, the, of your parents in the world set up, but now you are born again into the family of God. Hallelujah. That is what he said. That was what he was going to do. I am going to prepare. I am going to prepare a place for you. Where was Jesus going? That time he said that. Was he going to heaven? No. He was on his way, proceeding towards Jerusalem to eventually die and what? Resurrect. Hallelujah. That was why he promised them that the Holy Spirit will come. All, what is the Holy Spirit coming to do? The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ that will come to live in you and making you sons of God. Now look at what he said. When he now went to prepare through his death and resurrection and came back by his resurrection, what did he say? He said to Mary in John chapter 20 verse 17, Go to my brothers. Hallelujah. Now he has brought them to the fold. Go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. So my father is now your father. You are sons of God just as I am the son of God. But you are son of God through me. Jesus Christ has brought us. He has elevated us to the same status as he has before his father. Bible said, the one who is joined with the Lord is one with him in spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 29, For whom God did for new, he did predestine to conform to the image of his son, that his son might become now the firstborn among many brethren. Hallelujah. Now he was the only begotten son of God. But through his 
work of redemption he have drawn from all tribe and tongue and nation, men and women, to become sons of God. Hallelujah. It is only the sons of God that are qualified to have inheritance in the kingdom of God, in the reign of God, in the realm of God, in the family of God. And that, that is where Jesus is. That where I am, that is where you will be also. And that was fulfilled when he resurrected and ascended into heaven and released the spirit upon the first believers and subsequently to every other person who will believe. Hallelujah. The sons of God are the only ones that can inherit that kingdom. That is why the new birth is of essence if you must be where he is. Where is he? He is the son of God. He has the status of sonship and he sits at the right hand of God, meaning that he is the hand and authority. He is the one that God uses to manifest his glory and power. Hallelujah. And he is bringing you into that status. And that is only done through the new birth. And the new birth happens once you believe. That is why he said, you believe in God, believe also in me. For only through me can you become a member of the family. Be believing in God makes you a mere creature of God. Believing in Jesus makes you a child of God. Hallelujah. Are you a child of God? Are you just a creature? The Bible says, on that final day, those who have believed will rise up unto eternal life. Those who have not believed will rise up unto eternal damnation. So there is a separation between the goat and the sheep. All those who have been born again have been translated from the dominion of darkness into the dominion of his dear son. So we have come to that place where he becomes our what? First begotten, firstborn, senior brother. Hallelujah. That he might be firstborn among many brethren. We're going to read other scriptures to portray this understanding. Hallelujah. So, the new birth is what makes us new creation. And the new creation are only for those who have been born of God through faith in Jesus Christ. We have been made exactly to become like Jesus. Having the same family status like Jesus. Just like when you go and marry a young lady from another family, and you marry her into the family, she begins to answer the name of the family and becomes a member of the family with all rights and privileges. Just like those who are born naturally in that family. It's also like when you go to the orphanage and you adopt, officially adopt a child and bring into the family. That child becomes a member of the family with all the rights and, uh, and benefits like the free, that the one who is born in the family by blood. You can go to the orphanage and take a child and make her make the child your house help. Yes. But this one, you are adopting the child not as a house help, but as your own child. You give him your name. He becomes qualified to inherit. That is what Jesus Christ said. Where I am, there you will be also. And if you are born again, you are already where he is. You are not looking forward to. That is the mansion he's talking about. That mansion is the family. In my father's house, there is space. There is room. There is opportunity for more. Like they said, there is room at the cross. Hallelujah. Through the cross of Jesus, through his death and resurrection, we have been brought into that family. The Bible says we have been risen with him. To sit with him. That is what he, he is not bringing us into a religious relationship where we only see God as the deity and we try to worship a deity, try to do sacrifices to a deity, try to carry some incense, try to dress in a special awkward way, try to do certain things to please the deity. You believe in God, that's good. You can do anything you like to try to please God as your own, but that does not save you. What saves you is your faith. That was a belief also in me. So that we'll be able to be admitted into the Father's house so that where he is, which, is, which means 
His status becomes your status. Hallelujah. By the way, before we go further, let me point out one scripture that many Christians have always been quoting. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. He said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, if you ever take any story of the Bible out of the narrative of the gospel, you misunderstand it. Jesus Christ was talking about, do not worry about what you shall eat, what you shall wear, what you shall this and that. But he says, seek ye first. He was talking to the people, seek ye first the kingdom of God. What he meant was that, seek to be in this kingdom. Seek to become a child of God. Seek to come to that where I am. Let becoming a member of God's kingdom be your desire. That is like evangelism. We are telling the unbelievers, seek ye first. You are coming to me. Pastor, pray for me. I want a car. I want house. I want this. I want that. I want the other one. My brother, you need all those things, yes. But seek first to be born again. That's why I am not happy with any preacher who meets an unbeliever. And instead of ministering Christ to him, so that he can receive Christ and become a member of God's kingdom, you are telling him, God says he's going to bless you this year. God says this year he's going to have many cars. God says this year he's going to marry. God says this year he's going to do this. God says this year he's going to do that. Uh, God showed me that there is a witch in your family uh, where we have to be very prayerful so I can, can pursue them. You have not presented Christ to the person. You have not given the person the privilege of becoming part of the kingdom. You have not told him to seek first the kingdom of God. A young man came to me years ago and said that I should please, pastor, pray for me. I want to go to university. I want to study medicine. Pray for me that I will pass the exams and study medicine to become a medical doctor. That's a wonderful thing. But I told him, are you born again? He said, but pastor, I came for prayers. So that you can pray for me that you know, I can pass this exam and become a... I said, are you born again? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. If you are not in God's kingdom, every other thing is vanity. There has no eternal value. Are you born again? I explained what born again means to him, and he said he's not born again, even though he goes to church, but he was not born again. So I preached that gospel to him and led him to accept Jesus Christ and become a member of God's kingdom. So at that point, he has sought the kingdom of God and he has been brought into that family kingdom of God. Where I am, there he may be also. He has come into where he is. He has become a child of God with the same status. But as many as receive him, to them he gave the right, the privilege to become what? Sons of God. And when he believed and become son of God, I now pray for him to go and succeed. Hallelujah. He went, he wrote, he succeeded, became a medical doctor. He's one of the big doctors in the city where he is right now. I'm talking to you. One of the specialist doctors. Hallelujah. And one day, I was somewhere, and then I didn't know, I, I, I even forgotten who he was. He recognized me and introduced me as his father in the Lord. I laughed. Hallelujah. Because I don't usually like all this father in the Lord thing. <laughs> when, he, when he told me that I'm his father in the Lord, I said, okay, praise God. Who are you? He said, this man, when I met him to pray for me to become doctor, he first thing he asked me is, are you born again? That's what he mean by seek ye first. Don't come to me and say, pastor, pray for me. I want to get married this year. Are you born again? That's why even in Bible school, before you join Bible school, the phone will give you, ask you, are you born again? We will not stress you out if you say you're not born again. No. We will not say because you're not born again, we will not admit you into the Bible school. No, no, no. We will admit you. Because the first thing you will learn is how to be born again. And you must be born again. And many have been born again in the Bible school. Just by coming in. Hallelujah. They never knew they were not born again. They were just practicing religion. You believe in God. Believe also in me. So you don't owe every day. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Every day. <laughs> they say, brother, if you want God to bless you, seek ye first the kingdom of God. It means go and donate something in church. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. It means do this thing first. That is not what it means in the context of the gospel narrative. You can change the meaning for yourself for anything you like. But if you are going to say it according to what Jesus Christ meant, it doesn't mean that every day you are trying to seek the kingdom of God. My brother, 
I am seeking the kingdom of God. Moses said, give the kingdom of God. That is what I'm seeking. Every day I'm seeking the kingdom of God. You don't seek the kingdom of God indefinitely. Once you are born again, you have entered into the kingdom of God. It is once for all. Christ has redeemed us once for all. If you are born again, you are done with Matthew 6, 33. The other thing you have to go is to go higher into the next realm, which is renewing your mind to acclimatize with the kingdom you are in. You are a new child brought from the orphanage and brought into a new family. In the orphanage, you, they ration your food. In the orphanage, you rarely enjoy anything. But now you have been brought into the family. You must begin to change your mentality. If not, even in that family, you'll be acting like somebody who is in the orphanage. There are many Christians who are in the family of God, which is God's kingdom, but yet they do not see themselves as Christ sees them. They still see themselves as religious people. In their prayer, you will see the way they pray. They pray like people who have not yet got into the kingdom. They, they sing songs that does not show that they have got into the kingdom. They, are, they see things from the worldly perspective instead of from the word perspective. So, after you have been admitted into that level, where I am, there you may be also, go higher to the phase of renewing your mind by the word through the spirit. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 2 to 14, it says, now that you are born again, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us of God. You, you, should, you should renew your mind to know it. Because the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit of God, for they sound like nonsense to him. And they cannot understand what is happening. Because those things can only be discerned spiritually. So you need to begin to acclimatize your mind to the spiritual reality of where you are. That where I am, there you may be also. You are there already. You are not looking forward for Jesus Christ to come and take you there. He has already come. He has taken you there. He is coming again physically. is to the establishment of the physical kingdom of God. But already, we are in his kingdom. We are in that family called the kingdom of God. It's a family kingdom. Hallelujah. You are not there as a subject. You are there as a prince. Hallelujah. You are a prince of God. Just like Jesus Christ is the prince of peace, you are also a prince because you have been formed in the image of his son. Okay, so Jesus did all he did so that you and I can have the right to be God's sons, just like him. In the new creation, you are not inferior to Jesus. Somebody said, ah, what are you to talk? We are not like Jesus, so nobody like him. There's no one like you, no one like you. Yes, no one like him. But he has made you to be like him. For he says, for as he is, so are we in this world. Hallelujah. We are not inferior to Jesus because as he is, so are we in this world. First John chapter 4 verse 17. So we do not have fear of anything anymore because the, the love of God has brought us to a place where we are just regarded before God as Jesus. When we say we are praying in Jesus' name, people are arguing without you to say in Jesus' name, or you should not say in Jesus' name. Well, the key in Jesus' name is your understanding on what basis you are praying. In Jesus' name means that you believe that you are on the same status as Jesus. So when you are talking, you are talking in the name of Jesus, meaning that, meaning that you are talking as Jesus. You are speaking as Jesus. That will give you the understanding that your prayers will be answered. Say, Father, I thank you because I know you answered me always. So you may say, in Jesus' name. But if it is not from the heart, 
of the understanding of your status in the kingdom of God is just like religious mumbo jumbo. Makes no difference. Hallelujah. So, we are not inferior to him. He is the firstborn among many brethren. He is the first among equals. It is not me who did that. That is what he chose to do. That is the status he chose to bring us. Just like when Jonathan brought David to a status of brother. We say we are now one. It was Pharaoh who brought Joseph to the status of the second in command in the whole of Egypt. Pharaoh had children, but none of his children were made second in command. But he chose to make Joseph second in command in the whole of Egypt. And that no Egyptian can do anything without Joseph, including his own children. So it is Jesus Christ and his father that chose to make us his own children. So it's not just his father. He is our father. He is my father. And I belong to that kingdom of God through the new birth. Now, we have been born again by the Spirit. We are also being renewed by the Spirit so that we can start thinking in the new family we find ourselves. That's a story of a young girl who never knew that the house she was living in was her family house with her brothers and sisters. She never knew. She thought she was a house head because somebody decided to deceive her. Eventually, when the true story came out and she realized that she was the member of the family, she was still thinking like a slave. They had to reorientate her mind to adjust to the status of children of the family. Religion does not want us to have that understanding. That is why they create the issue of the clergy and the laity. You see, those who call themselves the clergy are like gods. They sit on a very, if you come to the church, they will make one big chair and make it with gold and put it heavy, and then the clergy will sit down there and wear a very big dress with big cap and balance on the chair. And when you are coming to him, he must kneel down. He, yeah, that is your brother in the Lord. Though. That is bro. One man of God said he met another man of God who is bishop. And he goes, oh, my brother, how are you? He said, hey, don't call me brother. I'm not a brother. I am bishop. He said, if you cannot be my brother, you cannot be my bishop. If you cannot be, he's a fellow minister. Oh, do my fellow ministers. This one is answering pastor. This one is answering bishop. He said, if you cannot be my brother, you cannot be my bishop. It's not about title. The title is your administrative role in the church as the monitor, class prefect. It doesn't give you, in fact, I would prefer that you don't put throne, golden chair, you know, for you to sit down and then the other chairs are inferior. No. Let, or if you are having chairs on the podium for, for the dignitaries or whatever, the officials to sit, let all the official chairs look the same. Everybody sit down. When they met Jesus, they couldn't distinguish him between disciples. Hallelujah. Yes, you are the leader. They can know you are the leader. But don't make yourself look like a demigod. And the people start worshipping you. Jesus brought us to the same status with him. But in religion, they make us to feel that we are not even in the same status with the, with the bishop. We are not even in the same status with the archbishop or the pope or the whatever title, primate and founder. We, that's why they tell you they will put crazy in your mouth, you drink, put snake in your mouth, you talk, put the, the toll in your mouth, you drink. They will tell you to go and sell all your property and bring the money you go and sell and bring without reasoning. Your brain doesn't work. They will pick the Bible and twist it and say, Amen. You don't go back to check very well whether they are correct because you feel that he knows it better. He goes, Okay, sir, you said this, please. Can you give me better understanding? Can you break this down? Because this doesn't make sense. You don't tell me, I ah, do not make sense when you get to heaven. Keep quiet. Help me to understand it now. It's not when you get to heaven you understand it. It's now. When you get to heaven. <laughs> anyway, that's another story for another day. Hallelujah. So, that where I am, there you may be also, is not a promise anymore. It was fulfilled the day Jesus Christ ascended to heaven and released the spirit of sonship on all those who believe in him then, now, and the future. Those who have believed in him before then, 
those who are believing in him now, those who believe in him in future, they are all open to come into that family. Hallelujah. It's a family of God. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Those who are in God's kingdom are sons of God. The Spirit receive, we receive does not make us slaves. Where I am as a son, that is where you are also. You are not a slave. You are a son. The Spirit you receive, Romans chapter 8 from verse 14, the spirit you receive does not make you a slave so that you live in fear. Are you not living in fear as a child of God? You go to church, after they are preaching, <laughs> you ask, Christians are the most fearful people in the world, especially those of them who are holiness, Pentecostal Christians. Fear! <laughs> they fear. To them, the fear of God is terrorism. Not even the, the reverence for God is fear. Terror. God has not given us the spirit of terrorism. That word fear, used for fear, fear God means reverence. It's not terrorism. You don't fear your father, you reverence your father. You don't fear your elder brother, you reverence your elder brother. Jesus Christ is our elder brother, we reverence him as our elder brother. Who has brought us into the family that where he is, that is where we are right now. We are not looking forward to Go to be where he is. We are we are with him. We are with him right now. He says, So you don't live in fear again. Romans chapter 8 from, from verse 14. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption as sons. And that is why you cry, Abba Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. The Spirit of God in you is the proof. Is a testimony that you are a child of God. You are God's child. You are born into his kingdom, family kingdom. It is not political kingdom, it's a family kingdom. Just like you are born in the family in the in the kingdom of Great Britain, it's a family kingdom. Only children, the royal children, you are born into as a royalty. Jesus is the king of the family. He has made you also kings in that family that you may reign with him in his family. Where I am, there you may be also. Maybe because if you refuse to accept this gospel, you will not be there. If you have accepted it, you are there. You are not going to be there. It's not about heaven. It's talking about the family of God, the kingdom of God, and you are there. For he has translated us from the dominion of the world, which is in darkness, into the dominion of his son, which is light. Eight verse 17 of Romans says, Now, if we are children, then we are heirs. A heir means somebody who has the right of inheritance. Do you have the right of inheritance? You do not buy anything in God's kingdom, you inherit it. And anybody who tries to attack your inheritance will be dealt with. Because the Bible says, angels are ministering spirits to those who inherit what? Salvation. And salvation is your admission into that family kingdom of God, where you are right now, seated in the right hand of God. We are heirs of God and co -heir. Do you see co heirs Co heirs with Christ. Co heirs. Co. Not subordinate. Co. It's co because he is the first and we are the co, we are co-opted into it, <laughs> as it were. Hallelujah. If you have this understanding, you will stop being afraid. My brother, I don't want to miss heaven. No. Jesus Christ is going to come back to come and take us to where he is. I don't know where he is. You are already where he is, my brother. What are you afraid of? Unless you didn't hear the gospel and what you believed it was just mere religious belief, then you need to hear the gospel. And that gospel is that God loves you. And he has given his son so that you can become his son. And then you will not perish but have eternal life. Do you want that? Yes. Then you just say, Lord Jesus, I accept that you are my Lord and you are my Savior. And I receive the offer to become a member of your family. Amen. Once you have said that, 
He now does the other thing by putting his spirit in you. Simple. It is not your duty to burn yourself again. He will burn you again. Just believe. But as many as believe him and receive him, he gave the right. He brings them. Not born of human will, but born of God. Look at it. John chapter 1 verse 12 to 13. But as many as receive him, to them gave he the power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which we are born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, but of the will of God, not of man, but of God. You are born of God. That would say, ye are of God, little children, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The next place we read is Hebrew chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. But we see Jesus. Now, when you have come into this kingdom, you need to change your mindset. And be to behold the things that are new. Change your mindset. Say, but we see Jesus, who was made little, lower than the angels, so that he can suffer death, crowned in glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should test death for every man. For it become him, for whom all things are, and by whom all things are, and by whom are all things, in bringing many souls to glory. Jesus is bringing many souls. Because in my father's house, there are many rooms. There are many opportunities. There are many mansions, as it were. And so he's bringing us. That's his father's house. is the father's family. Family. It's not mansion in the sky. It is family. The kingdom family of God. He has brought us as sons. Not as angels. But as sons, we are superior to angels. As sons, some people say when they die, they don't join angels to do work. <laughs> you are not joining any angel. You are not created to be an angel. You are created to be superior to angels because you are a son. Angels are your servants. No matter how mighty and big the angels may be, they are your servants. Angels are ministering spirits to those who inherit salvation. Hallelujah. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he, Jesus, who sanctified, and those whom he has set apart, they are now one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them his brethren. He calls us his brethren if you are born again. Not if you are a church person who just believes in God. If you are a a born again who believe that in Christ you 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 have accepted what he did and believe and ask him into yourself as your Lord and Savior. That word Lord means my elder brother who has saved me. He is the principal. We honor him as our principal, as our Lord. But by his own desire, he makes you to become something with him. To be conformed to his image. First John 3, 1 to 2. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because they don't know, they don't know him. The world doesn't know Jesus. The Muslims think that they know Jesus. So they wrote a lot of things in the Quran that they say that is another Isa. They explain somebody who they call another Esa in the Quran, and the person denies that he's not the son of God. The person say that when he co you come again and tell the people, the Christians, that they are talking, they are talking nonsense. That Jesus in the Quran is not Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for God's sake. We can, for argument's sake, you know, just to argue and ag agree with you small. But that another Esa is not Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah. It's not because they don't know him. The world does not know him. You cannot know him except it's revealed to you. And it's revealed to you through the gospel. When you reject the gospel, any other picture of Jesus you have is not Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's another Jesus. There are many Jesuses. In Brazil, a man met a friend and saw him. Please, I'm looking for a, a man called Jesus. He said, yes, I know him. So not a man met his friend. A preacher went to Brazil and met one Brazilian. I said, please, do you know Jesus? He said, yes, I know him. He lives down the road. 
Yes, I know him. He lives down the road. Because they don't know him. And because they don't know him, they cannot understand what about being born again, the new creature. This is what I'm talking about. All they know, they know, I believe in God. Jesus said, believe also in me. Therefore, the world know us not because they don't know him. Beloved, now that we are sons of God, and it does not yet show physically what we shall be, but we know that when we shall see him, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. That place actually says, when we shall see him, we will discover that we are like him because we now see him as he is. So, with open face, you behold him as in a glass and you have been transformed into that image. Right now, you can enjoy that glory and power of this family kingdom if you will stop looking for what has already happened. Stop fasting and praying. Some people are going to fast and pray so that God will when Jesus Christ comes, you take him to the mansion. You are wasting your energy. You are already in that mansion, except you have not been born again. And born again doesn't mean being a member of a church. Born again doesn't mean that you, have, you pray three times a day. Born again doesn't mean that you have stopped all the bad things you are doing and started doing good things. Born again is a spiritual rebirth, which is effected from the point when you have believed in what Christ has finished for you on the cross. And his resurrection has brought to you eternal existence of a new person. In conclusion this morning, we must now know that since we have now been brought into that status with Christ, may we begin to renew our mind, our thinking, from thinking as children of the flesh, which is the children of this world, and start thinking as children of the spirit, which is God. Walking in the light of his word, not in the light of the world. In the world, all you see is tribulation. In him, you see cheer and victory. You say, a man born of a woman is a few days full of trouble. But man born of the spirit is of eternal life and full of blessings. Peace. Come unto me, all ye that are laboring with heavy load, and I will give you what? Refreshment. Rest, as it were. You must behold that all things are become new. You must begin to that beholding is a change of mind. Don't look at yourself from the religious point of view. Don't look at yourself as a sinner. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? That you are mindful of me. Who am I? This is not about who you are. So David said, who am I? That is David before, he, before the new creation was made manifest. David was not yet born again. All those who believe in the revelation of Jesus Christ before he came, received the spirit after. They are all going to be born again. And you that is today, you are born again. They have hope because they have faith. They saw in advance and they believed. And you are seeing today and you are believing. So stop looking forward to the past. Look forward to what has already happened. Behold, all things are become new. God saved us in Christ. Not because of the good things that we have done, but because of his mercy, he saved us by the washing of the Spirit. And what? The renewal by the Holy Spirit. Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not think like the people of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, thinking according to the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Think in line with the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God, which is the revelation of Jesus. That is who you should think in line with. Looking unto Jesus. Romans 12 verse 2. And finally, before we finally, finally, <laughs> 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. With open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are being changed into his image from glory to glory by the Spirit of God. So as you begin to adjust your mind, looking at Jesus, who is the perfect, acceptable, and good will of God, you are being transformed into that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. 
physically. You begin to see yourself operating just like Jesus Christ, even before the second coming. James chapter 1, verse 25. But the one who look into the perfect Lord of liberty and continue to do so without forgetting what he has had, but a doer of the work, manifesting what he has shaped, have been revealed. He said, this person will be blessed in whatever he does. So instead, we must look into the perfect law of liberty and meditate on it day and night. As Psalm 1 verse 2 to 3 says, we will be like a tree planted by the stream of water that bears fruit in its season and, what, and our leaf will not wither and whatever we do will prosper. Hallelujah. So you see, that where I am, there may, you may be also. It's not talking about heaven. It's talking about your status as a child of God. Read every scripture in the narrative of the gospel, not in the narrative of your church dogma. That is where we are having conflict. That's why when anybody preaches according to the narrative of the gospel, you say, ah, what is this man trying to say? Is he trying to now say that? He's not trying to say anything. He's bringing you, you can go back and check for yourself. You can go back and check for yourself. I used to argue before. When I see, I've got to live by dogma until I, God told me, remove those gear from your head. Go back to the scripture and look at it. That's when I begin to understand the narrative of the, of the gospel from Genesis to Revelation. Hallelujah. That where I am, there you may be also. Are you where he is? Have you entered into that, in quote, mansion, which is the family of God? Have you come into that family, or are you still looking forward to the mansion when the family mansion is open to you right now? Open your heart and accept Jesus Christ. And if you are born again already, stop being afraid. Stop being scared of missing it. You are, you are already in it. Stop being scared of, I, I don't want to miss it. Oh, I don't want to miss it. Oh, you are, or, how can you? Ah. Somebody has been, at, <coughs> was blindfolded and taken to an airplane. And then he was given a seat to sit down. He never knew that he had entered the plane. He sat down. And he thought he was sitting where the people, the passengers are waiting. So, but they, they blindfolded him. So, what I said, please, oh, please, I don't want to miss the flight. Oh. I don't want to miss the flight. Oh. Uh -huh. Please, I beg you people. When they call us to enter, please, tell me, oh, tell me. I don't want to miss the flight. Oh. He didn't know that he was already seated inside the plane. And then the plane started moving. And then he was scared. Where are you talking to me? Uh, uh, uh. They said, my brother, cool down. Remove the eye thing for your eye. When they removed it, you are in the plane. We are already taking off. Hey, I never knew. That's how many Christians will be surprised on that day. They will, they will shock. So I, I thought, <laughs> I, I never knew. Because religion thrives in ignorance. Religion thrives in what? In ignorance. But God has given us the spirit of Faith of love of a sound mind. That faith is power. Not the spirit of terrorism or fear. We don't threaten anybody. We explain the good news. It's called good news, not fearful news. Good news doesn't make anybody scared. It makes everybody happy. Oh, thank God. So when Jesus Christ is coming again, praise the Lord. He's not coming to take me to the mansion because he already taken me to the mansion. And I'm in that mansion right now. Now, may your eyes be open to understand. That's why Paul says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. So that you may know who you are and where you are in God's kingdom. Hallelujah. We're going to end it here this morning. On, on Thursday, I will begin to explain issues of reconciliation. Maybe asking me, okay, what about rapture? What about that? I will explain those things in detail. In, on Thursday, we have a series of classes that are taking place at the CDI. You, you are free to join. But this morning, I want you to know that when Jesus said, where I am, there you may be also, he's offering you the opportunity to become a son of God. And if you are already, praise God, you are already where he is. If you are not, opportunity is open to you in my father's house. There are many mansions. Come and have your part in that family. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We trust that everyone who hears us understands this. 
Let the Holy Spirit illuminate the mind of every brother, sister, boy, girl that is listening to us this morning, that in the end, everyone will live in that joy, unspeakable and full of glory that we have in God's kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, brothers and sisters, uh, I believe you have been blessed by the teaching this morning. You may have a lot of questions. Don't start criticizing and saying, hey, what are you trying to say? Ask your questions. You are free to call. You are free to send us voice notes. Send text message. The number is there. We will answer you. And then we also ask you to join in giving an offering for this meeting this morning. The Bible says, the one who has been taught the word should share all things with his teacher. So package your offering and uh, give as we glorify God. Father, accept our offering we give to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, may the Lord bless and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May you enjoy his constant shalom now and consistently in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. See you next week.